right now I'm testing my Balinese compound theory. That is my main tent there, where my bed is, my personal belongings, and other stuff. Let me pause it because I'll have to walk a spiritual kilometre to my other tent. Voila. Here is... Oh, voila. <laughs> Here is the other tent. This is the toilet tent. So now, you may ask, why in my architectural experiment am I segregating a house and mimicking a Balinese compound over an area of a kilometre or two? Well, that's a good question, and I'm not going to pretend to act like a professor. I've been studying art. <laughs> I've been studying architecture for six years. I'm not a sixth year student. I'm doing something completely different to other architecture students. And I, I'm telling you now, it's making the best architect out of me. Uh, I'm not claiming to be the best. I mean, how dare I even compare myself to the Le Corbusiers and so forth. <laughs> Truly modern pioneers. But the point is... I'm mimicking the Balinese compound because man living with the elements in a natural setting, remember the whole idea of what I'm doing is to mix, fully mix the best of technology, but in such a way it's fully green and with the best of what was primitive or primitive, which is actually highly sophisticated and in many ways more sophisticated than what we do today. There are practices from three from hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago from past people who do, who practiced better passive cooling and heating than we do any, anywhere today, at whole. So, with that mix, what happens is a person in their daily sojourn will need water, food, fruit, and all sorts of stuff. So, what I'm saying is the reason it's a Balinese compound and over such vast territory is because, okay, there was main tent a minute ago. All my water needs are there. I know I don't shit in the morning until about two or three hours later, but I piss straight away. I can piss out in the bush. I've got everything in that tent. I know that if I'm going to walk about a kilometre, it's no longer going to be two or three hours that I'm going to shit. I'm probably going to shit the second I get to that tent. But I also know that once I shit in that tent, a hundred meters from there is some berries. There are also other bits and pieces of natural flour which you can get from the back of bark and from roots. In my pack, I'd carry a chopping board, the quick fire, the, you know, your gas and the fucking element. All the stuff I need to cook and prepare food. So I can prepare it on a big gigantic rock which acts as a chopping board. It's no different. You can even stand on some, stand up better than the best chopping board and bench top, right on the rock. So once I'm doing that, I can get my flour together, I can get the berries, I can roll them, I can do all sorts of shit and I can make a good breakfast with damper, I can even get some bush honey. And that's the whole idea, it all comes together, it all, it all coalesces. And there is no architect on the planet of the earth thinking this way at the moment. I am the only one thinking that way, this way. There are many architects who think similarly, very similarly, but at the more, and I should note, I shouldn't even call myself an architect, that's wrong, I need, I need to be, I need to be, I don't even care about the qualification side and part of the association, I need to be recognised by architects to be called an architect, so I apologise for calling myself an architect prematurely, even if I'm six years in. So, there are many people thinking similarly to me, similarly to me but not many, there's no one thinking this way, this is unique this is original but yeah, obviously it's inspired by other past greats I, I wouldn't be where i am if it's not for that i didn't learn from a bumhole i took notes of the greats and how they pioneered and what they were doing what they meant i've read some great books my recent book is on primitive uh living um i'll probably show you what book that is at some later date on a video one of these videos now going back to it and what my idea is it's you're going from like I said, you're going from place to place, and suddenly you have bush oats, uh, rolled fucking damper, you've got the berries going, you've got uh, uh, 
What else have you got? You got bush honey. Put that all together, and you've got yourself a damper with honey, with uh, berries, and that's just like any wheat bix meal. Even better because it's from the fucking bush and it's natural, it's not processed. And then when you want to go further, how how else could I further that? Are oh, there are many drinks you could make from the bush? Uh, there's a whole whole bunch of things you could add to make that experience so much better and a much more fulfilled breakfast. You could even find seeds in the bush and throw that into the damper. Sorry, I'm itchy. And you'd suddenly have the ultimate breakfast. And it's all there. It's all there to be uh, taken from the bush. Where I'm looking right now, I know I can quickly, I can grab a whole bunch of those fuckers, rinse them, uh, rinse them, uh, ring them, rinse them. I don't ring a lot. So it's, I ring them, ring them all, and the honey would come dripping out. You wouldn't get a shitload of honey, but it's still honey, and it would be enough for a meal. I'm looking at it right now. You can also go into other things and tap into the tree for oil. There should be a native tree around here where you can tap into the tree for oil, cooking oil, and it's fully healthy. I don't know. I haven't researched eucalyptus oil thoroughly. Pity I haven't, because eucalyptus is my fucking favorite tree. <laughs> How about that? Oh, I know everything about things I don't like, but I, my favorite fucking tree and smell and things koalas love, I don't know the properties of it in terms of cooking with it. You probably can't. Or maybe you can. Maybe it's just eucalyptus oil for healing is processed in a different way. I don't know. I'll have to research that. But the point is, I can eat, you could tap into uh, trees too, and all of a sudden... With the fry pan and all the cooking stuff that you have already with you from elsewhere, you don't have to find that from the bush. With all that stuff you've got already, you can suddenly, you know, grab the oil you've taken, put it in the fry pan. You've got everything you need to cook so long as you keep cleaning your stuff and you take care of it. And that's the amazing part of this experience. I'm already enjoying it. I'm already seeing what potential it has and i haven't even started yet i haven't even started at how unique this green experience can be and i am going to keep going with it that's where it, i am going to allude to it in this video so before i do i want to say that you may say to me pretty piss poor why do you use a fucking conventional tent you fucking dickhead it's plastic it takes this and this and this and this and that to make it and blah 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 no i understand that but it's already been made hasn't it me, Nathan, Abella buying a fucking tent or two, maybe ten, I should say, I've got five altogether here. Me buying that many tents isn't really going to stop production or start produ or keep production going, is it? So, no, I'm not, I'm not uh, adding to the continuation of plastic products and all that bullshit. And it's so much easier to set this up. So this would have taken me months instead of taking me a few days. So this is also... That all, that's all true and not hypocritical because I'm going to tell people that this is an exception and that if they're going to try and do what I do, don't mimic it with tents. Do the real thing. Use bush material uh, so it's fully green. I'm just being quick with it because I can. I'm a student. There's a point to this. You just have to... The only thing you've got to do is pretend that the cooking elements that I use are forged iron from the ground, which I, you can easily make if you know what you're doing. Uh, and all the other spoons and utensils are from trees and stuff. You, you can imagine they're all from there. So all the stuff that I would bring into the bush from elsewhere, just imagine it's been processed uh, out in the bush for the sake of this video and, and what I'm going to do in the future and what I have been doing. It's really just those cooking utensils, a few items, and the tent. They are what they are, but I'm just telling you why I'm doing that. So I'm sure I've clarified that enough now. So here's the beauty of it. Here's where it starts to get really sexy. When you use a compound, it's twofold. You can make it a communal tent. So even though you've got a toilet a kilometre away from there, if your mate Dick fucking parks his sleeping tent a kilometre away that way, you can also use it. You get where... The, do you understand where this is going? So instead of... Him buying a separate tent, and him buying separate products, and him doing this and that. 
you've got a communal toilet. Now, I'm not sure everybody will want to put up with each other's toilet smells and the shit and stuff, but if you do it properly, it's not that bad among men, at least three or four men max. You don't want to you know, smell everyone's shit. But you get my point. And then you've got kitchens. You can have kitchens in the open where everybody shares. So you're limiting space. Just with what I've done alone, the average, uh, take into consideration that the average house has between 20 to 40 square meters of walking and basically vacant walking and hallway space. In a tent, that's eliminated instantly. It's just a room. It is one room. It's a square. So you're eliminating all the useless triangles that connect the house together. Uh, triangles, rectangles. Now, the good thing about today's uh, designs, a lot of that's limited, so you don't see that much anymore. They are cracking down on that. But you say, ultimately, if you times all existing houses today, what is that, fucking five to ten million in Australia? Let's use the USA as, as an example. A hundred million. There's a... There's definitely more than 100 million structures. So let's just call it 200 million, 150 million structures in the US. So times 150 million by 30 square meters. Even better, divide 150 million by 30, and that should give you uh, the thousand, how many square meters the other way, if I'm correct. Is that how you do maths? Anyway, it's a lot of, it's a lot. It's probably, what's 30 in fucking, that's uh, 33. So you divide by 33 because that goes into 1,033 times. So if you divide 150 million by 33, just call it 30. If you divide it by 30, you've got 5 million square meters. Now that when I last checked, that's like five thousand hectares. That's five million five million square meters of hallways that are useless. So if you, five million square meters, if I'm correct, four thousand square meters is an acre. What's a hectare? Isn't an acre just doubled or something? So an acre. So you've got. 1.25 million acres. Or am I doing that wrong? Fuck no, that's very wrong. No, 1.25 million acres, you fucking idiot. Muppet. So you divide, divide 5 million by 4,000. Uh, divide, <laughs> divide, yeah, and then you take that off. You have about a t just under 2,000 acres, I think. You have a lot. You have a lot. There's a lot of fucking land. And that's all wasted in hallways and passageways. And I haven't even talked about the shared facilities, which would eliminate about 50 times that. So are you getting my point? So there is a principle here. There is a great principle of the saving the space part with the hallways, the shared stuff, and the actual shared stuff part, that second fold aspect, where you're sharing kitchens, where you're sharing this. And look, I understand there's always going to be rich fucks and whatever, but if this principle was maintained and made norm, you'd be able to limit, you'd, you'd be able to pretty much find up to 90, of all the human built stuff today, you'd probably be able to eliminate 90% of it if you did what I did properly. That's a lot. That is a fucking lot. And it's actually, and I'm proving it's architecturally possible. And it's just a small, tiny bit of, adjustment of habits and behaviors so it's it's phenomenal where this can go now here's the interesting thing i've, I've showed you i've explained that twofold aspect here's the most interesting thing i'm not saying that you know come out in this like i am and live in it it happens to be the best place to get the core principle right i'm ultimately what i'm doing would be done in a community an actual suburb but I can't you, obviously I can't do this experiment in a suburb and I want to get the I want to get the core principle. So to get the core principle from the architectural science science yeah from the architectural science perspective you have to come out into the bush and do it the old fashioned way. You have to go right to the atoms, the building blocks and this is where it is. 
So that's what I'm doing out here, and that's multiple tents, the, 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 the far walk and how it all maps in my day. If everybody utilized this principle, but in the real world, fuck me dead, if we'd done this 150 years ago, there'd have been, we'd have never known what the fuck the greenhouse effect, or not the greenhouse effect, we'd have never known what global warming was or is if this was done 150 years ago. But it's not too late. The Earth is the ultimate regenerator. The Earth, the Earth is our best friend. This, all this is from the Earth. There's nothing the Earth can't do. I mean, you probably can send it pretty far fucked, but I mean, you have to do that on purpose. Other than that, the Earth is a very smart organism in itself, so it'll regenerate, but habits need to change now, not in 10 or 20 years, right now. And I'm doing it, I'm living the real thing, and I fucking love it. Doing it while I'm stealing chicken nibblings, for fuck's sake.